these trees that line our coastlines, what role do they play in our day-to-day -day lives? And what do they do for our reef? In this episode, we set off deep into the mangroves with the team from Earthwatch Australia to find out what's happening in these coastal forests on the front line. If you live on the coast and you live near mangroves, whether you know it or not, you depend on mangroves. Mangroves are like the kidneys of the coast. They're filtering the water that comes down through our estuaries and waterways before it goes out on the reef. And in doing so, they take out all the sediment and nutrients and nasty stuff that's coming from our urban environments and our agricultural environments and preventing it from going and doing harm to our coral reefs because we know that poor water quality impacts coral reef habitats. So mangroves are doing a great job cleaning that water and keeping our Great Barrier Reef environment clean. If you've eaten a fish or a crab or a prawn lately, then you've eaten a little bit of mangrove because all those seafood species depend on the mangrove habitats for part of their life cycle. Australia has a, a vast coastline and a lot of it's covered with mangroves. So what we need is lots of people out on the ground to help us understand what's going on with our mangrove habitats, what are the local issues and what can we do at a community level to help reduce those impacts that are threatening the capacity of mangroves to adapt. All right, can everyone identify a yellow mangrove? So we need the community's help to help understand what's going on and more importantly, do something to protect those habitats. Over the next couple of days here in Gladstone, we've got teachers and community leaders from around the Great Barrier Reef we're taking them out into the mangroves and showing them what they can do so that we can work with them at a local level to come up with actions that will protect those mangroves and salt marsh habitats into the future so that the future generations can keep having all the wonderful ecosystem services that those mangrove and salt marsh habitats provide. Especially uh, in our ecology unit at school, we teach the kids that uh, mangroves are the nurseries for the water, for the reef and on the Mackay region we have a lot of reef so if that's kind of instilled in them from an early age potentially it's something they'll always look out for. Doing a few activities in and around the mangroves and salt marshes. Good to meet you all thanks for thanks for jumping online. Those crabs are what we call the the keystone species the ecosystem engineers without our little mangrove crabs we don't have mangroves. So mangroves store a lot of carbon. They're climate change superheroes as far as habitat goes. So mangroves store four to 10 times more carbon than any other forest type, but they trap it up to 50 times faster. Okay. This way. That way. Down. The mangrove trees live in a salty environment, so they have to turn over their leaves a lot faster than other forest types to get rid of the salt. And those leaves are trapping carbon from the air as part of what's called photosynthesis. So that's how the tree gets its energy. They take the carbon and they store that in their leaves and they re release the, the oxygen. And that carbon that's in the leaf falls on the mangrove forest floor where it becomes lunch for a little mangrove crab. And mangrove crabs are a really underappreciated uh, component of our Great Barrier Reef habitats because mangrove crabs are the keystone species of the mangroves. Some people even call them the ecosystem engineers. They make their little burrows in the mangroves and that helps the mangrove forest drain, but they also take mangrove leaves that fall from the canopy. They take those leaves, bury them in their burrows, and then they eat those leaves in their burrows and that fertilizes the tree, but also takes carbon that's been trapped in those leaves from those mangrove uh, leaves takes them down into their burrows and buries that carbon in the mangrove mud where hopefully it'll stay forever. What we're doing is setting up a crab cam that's going to be set up looking out over the mangrove forest floor and then we're going to deploy some leaves tied to string and what the camera will show is how many crabs are in this area per metre squared, so we get an idea of the crab abundance. And then the leaves will tell us how much leaf material is being consumed by the crabs, which means how much carbon is being trapped from the mangrove forest in the mangrove forest mud by those little crabs. 
We're looking for some active crab burrows so that we can hopefully trap some little critters that come out of their burrow overnight or during the day, have a little look around for some leaves and then accidentally maybe take a little journey into our pitfall trap and then we can see exactly what's living in this ecosystem. I have still learned so much about crabs, what they can do and to be able to take that back to the kids yeah, well the end game is to obviously get more kids involved in this stuff. I suppose the number one thing for me is I want to learn heaps more so that I can teach them. Being able to run small workshops for our community and then be able to take that out into schools and get a school programs established as well where we're being able to educate about why mangroves are so important um, and, and what people can do at a really basic level. Mangroves only exist in the small space between the land and the sea in the tidal zone and as sea levels rise, that tidal zone is shifting, so the mangroves have to move too. But unfortunately, we've got a whole lot of coastal development, housing, agriculture, infrastructure. It's right there behind the mangroves that prevents them moving landward, so it means we're getting this coastal squeeze effect and losing habitat. If we lose large patches of mangroves, we get loss of fish habitat structure and loss of fish habitat value. We lose the capacity of that area to clean our water, but importantly is when those mangrove habitats die, all the carbon that they store goes back up into the atmosphere and that's no good for climate change. But to come back with so much knowledge and be able to try and I guess share that knowledge is going to be yeah, really exciting. I've been working in the mangrove and salt marsh space for, for nearly 20 years now and I've, I've seen that whilst there is a lot of degradation and a lot of threats going on. We are improving our understanding as a community of their importance, of their value. So I really do believe that by working together, we can all make a real difference.